Let me fix this real quick over on TikTok. Good morning, everybody. It's Misha. I am trying to fix an error over here. Where um, something has happened with my camera. There it is. Okay. Got it done. Yay. Good morning, you guys. I promised to talk about bones and muscle this morning. And this gets a little complicated, so we're going to dive in. But while I'm diving in, everybody who's joining in, thank you for joining. Tell me where you're coming in from. I love to know. I'm in Maryland. Um, it's a little cold up here. I had to turn the heater on. I like my house pretty cold, but 60 degrees inside is a little too cold even for me. So um, I'm wearing a little warmer clothes today, and we're going to start talking about muscle and bone, and there's a lot of interesting information about this whole thing that carries your body around, that carries everything else around, um, our, our heart, our gut, all of that. We, we need those muscles and bones to carry us and protect us. And it is also linked to insulin. Remember that insulin is responsible for carrying that energy to every single cell in the body. And that also means your bones and muscles. So as we go through this, I want to talk about muscle development. I want to talk about bone development. I want to talk about the importance of it. And we're going to talk about what happens when you do those restrictive calorie diets and those shots for weight loss to all that bone and muscle that we want to hold on to so well. So two things you want to understand is that in an average middle-aged person, we're going to start with the muscle. I'm going to talk about what insulin resistance is a little later, just because I want to get to it this morning. Your muscle comprises about 25 to 30% of your body when you're middle aged. Now, around the age of 40 or so, you start to lose about 1% of that muscle every year. And that's normal. But with insulin resistance, remember that some cells are resistant to taking up the insulin and your muscle cells are some of the most responsive to insulin in the body. So when you're not getting the clues for those muscles to grow from the insulin and you're naturally deteriorating muscle, now you're having an accelerated loss of muscle or sarcopenia going on in your body. So if you're aging or you've gone on some restrictive calorie diet or something, we'll talk about those again later, and you're noticing, I have something impeding my chair down here. And you're noticing that it's harder for you to put on muscle. It's harder for you to maintain muscle. Insulin resistance could be one of the clues that's stopping getting that energy into the muscle for the muscle to be able to grow. So you're less likely to have more muscle when you're insulin resistant and likely to have more fat. When you do those calorie restrictive diets, what you're doing is encouraging the loss of muscle and you're actually along with the loss of the fat. Now, when you're doing the shots, there's a reason why they call it ozempic face and ozempic butt, because you're not just losing a tremendous amount of fat, about 50% of the weight you lose when you're doing those medications is your muscle. Now, after the age of 40, not only are you naturally losing about 1%, it's harder and harder and harder to put it back on. So I used to be a power lifter, and it's interesting that that age of 40 is where the age class has changed because strength starts to go down dramatically, even if you're doing the same amount of weight-bearing exercise, even if you're doing all the stuff that a 25 or 30-year-old is doing, you're just not as strong about um, – you're not as strong after the age of 40 as you were when you're 25 or 30 because of this muscle degradation. Um, and what I'm talking about with the GLP ones comes from papers and from metabolic scientists. So um, Anna, I would encourage you to become more educated about the GLP ones. So when we have insulin resistance, we understand that you're, you're at risk of not building as much muscle. How you can maintain your muscle is to start to become more insulin sensitive so those muscle cells can get the proper cues to grow and be healthy. Part of that is that they're not able to use the proteins that you're bringing into your body as well as the carbohydrates that are building muscle. So your muscle is in about three different states. It's either 
using up more protein than it can produce since you're having muscle loss, which is occurring in insulin resistance. It's at a normal state or a, a neutral state where it's building as much muscle as it's use, using up or protein as it's using up. So um, then there's the third state, which is what we most of us would like to be in, where we're using as more protein and building more muscle than we're losing. So one clue in that is the, the sixth step of my six simple steps to, in, to improve your insulin resistance is move your body. So if you, are, if you are not moving, if you're not putting weight bearing exercise on your body, you're not building muscle, you're not maintaining muscle. And again, you're losing 1% after the age of 40. So you really want to do some weight bearing exercise. We've talked about putting a backpack on with 50 pounds in it, all of that. Um, get out and move your body and put some weight on it to help maintain your muscle. Get insulin resist, insulin sensitive. We're going to talk about what that looks like in a little bit and why insulin resistance is causing this. Just know that insulin is a transport system. I heard about, talked about this way as in putting away the groceries. So, um, Insulin is, you know, you go out and get the groceries, the food you eat, and insulin's job is to put those groceries away. And it's putting it in the cells and in the places it belongs to, in the cupboards or the fridge or wherever in your body that it needs to go. And when the signals from insulin aren't happening, um, things that should be going in the fridge aren't going in. And hey, Ro, and things that should be going in the cupboard aren't going there. Maybe some of the stuff from the fridge is going in the cupboard. And now you have problems in the body. So um, you guys... <laughs> Thank you, knucklehead. Um, so, whew, you guys, let's let's clear the air a second this morning. There seems to be a lot of negative energy out there, and I'm not about that. I'm not about that. You, you, you want to make negative comments. You want to make negative stuff. Take that mess and go somewhere else because it doesn't belong here. Now, um, with bone, we want to. I want to talk about bone. There's so so much to know with bones. Now. There's not as much study about bones and insulin resistance as there is. I just realized there's some water damage on my ceiling as there is with bones. But what we can know about bones, and this is going to get, um, we'll talk about how to get it better in just a second, bless Barbie. Um, so bones, there's a number of things in your bones that are making them stronger. I do want to talk about this though. An insulin resistant person is heavier than a, a non-insulin resistant person, generally because they're carrying more fat. So what they found is in Caucasian people who are overweight, they have bigger bones, more um, bones, right? So you would think stronger bones, but actually their bones are more brittle. So even though they have more bone mass, the, the bones are brittle because that excess weight is most likely coming from the insulin resistance that is not allowing the bones to build stronger. So weight bearing exercise alone and extra weight alone is not the key. That'll give you bigger bones, but it doesn't mean stronger bones. So when we look at bones, we're going to dive in because this gets a little, uh, uh, this is somewhat new to me. So we're going to talk about it all. So there's osteoclasts, there's osteoblasts. There are two things in your bones that are making them grow or degrade. Osteoclasts are making your bones grow. Osteoblasts are degrading them. Now, in a normal in a normal situation, the, if you think about like remodeling a house or cleaning up a house, so the osteoclasts are like painting new tissue onto the bones. The osteoblasts are stripping old tissue off of the bones. So the osteoblasts are stripping away old bone. Osteoclasts are putting more new bone on. So it has to be in balance, right? Because we don't want to paint on a dirty structure. So osteo osteoblasts are cleaning up that surface while osteoclasts are encouraging the new um, bone structure. With insulin resistance, those are no longer in balance. Maybe you have too many osteoclasts and you're painting on more bone than it, it should be. So you have dry, you have flaky brittle bone. Maybe you have um, more osteoblasts, which is more common, and you're not getting, the bones are degrading quicker than they can build. Yes, skin takes can go away. And we'll talk about that in a second. Now, with the osteoclasts and osteoblasts, there's something called osteocytes, osteocalcin, sorry. 
And so that's part of where we're taking in calcium. And this even relates to insulin resistance um, in the fact that osteocalcin has to be in order. There's two types of osteocalcin. One feeds the osteoblast and one helps the osteoclasts. And if they're out of balance, again, your bones are not getting the nutrients that they need to be able to build healthy. Um, fibromyalgia, we're going to talk about that too. We can talk about that too. Now, so that's just kind of like a super broad overview of bones and muscle. But I want you to understand that your bone health and your muscle health are very much linked to your insulin health. So when I said 25 to 30% of your body is muscle mass and it's highly insulin sensitive, one of the best ways besides helping the bone strength and the muscle mass to become insulin resist, to become insulin sensitive is to have muscles that are working and open to taking that glucose in. But I've talked about the brain and the liver being huge users of glucose and receptors of insulin. And we've just talked about muscle. The fourth most sensitive or biggest user of glucose is your bones. So that whole process going on in your bones, I'll try to do a better video in short <clears throat> on how all that works. But the fourth biggest user of glucose and receptor of insulin is going to be your bones. So if that insulin receptor is off in the bones, now your bones are at risk. Now you have problems with osteoporosis. You um, can also start to have problems with osteoarthritis, uh, inflammation that's eating up the cartilage in your bones caused by all the excess insulin in your body. And remember, your gut gets inflamed and that starts to cause inflammation throughout the body. Now that inflammation is eating up the tissue in your knees, but it's also causing problems with the synovial fluid. I say knees because I've lost a knee, but it causes problems with the synovial fluid in your joints where it becomes inflamed and starts degrading as well. Now you have dry bones, you have dry joints, you have um, cartilage that's not there as much, you have synovial fluid that's not lubricating it as much, uh, like your meniscus is starting to degrade and go away, is at more risk for tears, and it all starts with being insulin resistant in, the, in, the, in all of the tissues. So it's insulin sensitivity is hugely important to this whole skeletal thing that we're carrying around all the rest of our health in. So if we're concerned about our kidneys, if we're concerned about our liver, and we should be, we also need to be concerned about the rest of the structure that's carrying them around, and it all ties back to metabolic issues and insulin resistance. My favorite food, Martha, is uh, chicken. <laughs> just chicken, 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 any kind of chicken. Um, in fact, I just did some Hasselback chicken uh, yesterday stuffed with uh, spinach artichoke um, and cream cheese. So, and then I did another version that had uh, Munster cheese and ham and some um, mustard barbecue sauce on it. But whether, whether it's like that or a Tuscan chicken or whatever, chicken is just my favorite food. So thanks for that question. Now, skin tags are, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. So skin tags are just an, an overreactive um, keratinocyte or it's breaking down the keratinocytes because the insulin is going into them too much. Keratinocytes are a skin cell. When that degradation of the keratinocytes happens, that's what gives your skin structure. When that breakdown happens, now you have these little pockets where your skin is not the same, and so it's, it's poking out like these little mushroom-like projections. When you get the insulin sensitivity un under control, that, that degradation of your skin cells starts to tighten up and the skin, the skin tags go away. So fibromyalgia is also linked to insulin resistance in a number of ways. You're having some neurological and nerve ending problems. And so you have this like weird pain throughout your body because your nerve endings are not communicating the way they're supposed to. Instead of communicating end to end, a lot of times those, those firings, those messages are kind of going out the side. You get these little electrical pains, you get just random pains throughout your body. The doctor can't explain it. So instead of saying, hey, you've got insulin resistance, they say, hey, you've got fibromyalgia. They put you on an NSAID. Guess what? NSAIDs, NSAIDs are destroying your gut health, causing more inflammation, causing more pain, causing more of what you're trying to avoid. So 
if you're insulin resistant, probably one of the worst things you can do for yourself is to do, uh, there's a lot of worse things, so I shouldn't put it that way, but one of the really bad things you can do for yourself is to be on high doses of NSAIDs. Use them sparingly, but don't be using them daily because the NSAIDs have been proven to cause more inflammation, which is causing more insulin resistance, which is furthering this bone and muscle problem. Um, bones cracking. So I, I need to know if you're talking about bones cracking, like if you're, are you talking about joints popping and cracking? Or are you talking about your bones actually breaking or cracking? I need to know the difference between that. So we're going to talk about psoriasis. Um, we talked about that a couple of days ago. So there's an inflammatory part to psoriasis. Most psoriatic people are very high, highly insulin resistant. What they found is, and I have a couple of people, I would have to find their stories because there are so many, but I've had a number of people who've had psoriasis who, when they got their insulin resistance under control, have not had psoriatic flares. So it all comes down to the inflammation in your body, kicking off something that's already present in a person with psoriasis. So in a number of these things, you guys got to think about like a light switch. Maybe it's present there. The condition is present there. But for most of us, there's a light switch that turns that on. So like psoriasis, inflammation, and insulin resistance can turn that on. And they're linking that more, more and more. Um, okay. So let's talk about insulin resistance now because we've had so many problems. Um, Diet, any tips? We're going to talk about all that right now. So how I overcame all of the stuff up above and became insulin sensitive, reduced my diabetes, my sleep apnea, all of the things. We're going to talk about that. What you need to understand is a couple of things first. Insulin resistance is resistance to the hormone insulin. So what's happening to us, and I just posted a video last night by Dr. Pradeep. I can never say his rum, rumnatus, rumnatus. Okay. So he's a cardiologist and he talks about insulin resistance a lot, but like he said in that video, what's happening is we're eating too often. We're in, we're eating food that's been so modified and so manufactured, whether we're talking about our organic foods or our, even our grass fed beef, sorry people, but that's even um, changed much and our raw produce that's all been changed modified, genetically modified. So those foods are turning into glucose more quickly or causing inflammation more quickly in our body than ever. And yet we're pouring more and more and more and more and more of it into our system. So especially sugar, there are a number of things that can cause insulin resistance, injury, repetitive surgeries, um, other inf causes of inflammation in the body cause insulin resistance, insulin resistance causes inflammation. What we're going to talk about is sugar. So for the most, for most of us, sugar is one of the biggest causes of insulin resistance. And that sugar is coming because we, even with our natural foods, fibers have been stripped away. So now fibers help us slow down the delivery of those carbohydrates or sugars, glucose to our system. Our system needs it. Our brain needs it. Our muscles need it. Our bones need it, but they need it in the right amount. If you went to fill up your car and when the tank filled up and it started spilling all over the ground, do you stop putting gas in your car or you just continue to pump that gas in and hope that, you know, the more gas you put in, the longer you're going to go. Meanwhile, that gas is spilling all over the floor. That's what we're doing with our food. We don't need as much as we're eating. We don't need it as often as we're eating it. And we need to have times where we're just not eating. Like Dr. Pradeep said, um, you know, genetically, it's been thousands of years that we've been in this fast and feast phase of life where our ancestors went out to hunt. I'm Native American. So, you know, they would go out and hunt. There would be times of real leanness where there's very little food. And then there would be times where they would go out and hunt and bring a lot of food in. But even at that, it would take days to, to, you know, strip the animal down, to cure the meats, to cook the meats, all of that. So we just didn't have food that was readily available all the time. Our genetics have not changed as rapidly as our food environment has changed. So we're eating too much. 
too often and foods that are turning into glucose too quickly in our system because things like fibers have been stripped out. So how you want to become insulin sensitive for the majority of us is this. So there's six simple tips and there's an ebook in my in my links in my bio that you can get this ebook. So fiber first before you eat every time you eat. And I'm going to show you what I did. Then you want to prioritize protein. Muscles need protein. And remember, heart, liver, kidneys, your intestines, those are all muscle tissue. They all need protein to be healthy. So pro, uh, fiber first, proteins, and about 50% of your protein, the meat that you eat, and I'm going to talk about meat because I'm a carnivore, about 50% of that goes into uh, glucose production. It's not just protein. So you can have an insulin spike even with protein, but it's far less than it is with carbohydrates. Fiber, protein, and then fats. Now, this one gets controversial, right? But when I'm talking about saturated fats, yes, saturated fats, things like extra virgin olive oil, um, avocado oil, coconut oil, can you overdo them? Yes, absolutely you can. You can overdo anything. But fats need to be paired with protein in order for the proteins to metabolize and build properly. Um, and if you do those three things, you're going to stay fuller longer and you're going to keep your insulin levels lower more consistently. So proteins are the most satiating of all of the three macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Protein is the most satiating, only spikes your insulin about half as much as a carbohydrate does. Carbohydrates are the least satiating. Our diets are primarily carbohydrates. So we eat, it goes through us really quickly, it spikes our blood sugar, it spikes our insulin, and then we're hungry again. And then there's a whole other things on the backside that are happening um, when we start to become insulin resistant, besides the gut microbiome being off, whole other topic, right? Um, fats are the second most satiating of those three carb those three macronutrients, but they don't spike your insulin. So fiber first to help deal with the carbohydrates, protein, fats, and then limit the carbohydrates, especially the processed carbohydrates, okay? You wanna focus on carbohydrates that are like dark green vegetables that grow above ground. Am I saying you can't have potatoes? Am I saying you can't have fruits? No, but get your protein and your fats in first, how do I get my fiber in first without, without doing all of that? I'm going to show you in a second. Then I want you to do some intermittent fasting. We need to fast and we need to feast. That's how our body is built. And I can go over that timeline of why that works in just a minute. But then you want to do some movement and weight bearing exercise. If you don't use it, you lose it. And the older you get, the harder it is to get it back. And if you will ever get it back. So keep moving, even if you feel like you're wheelchair bound or whatever, find some exercise to do, find something to do. You can do chair push-ups. you can do whatever. You'll, there's tons of videos on YouTube about all of that. For And there's tons of creators who create information and um, workouts for people who have mobility issues. So no excuses, no excuses. I don't care if you say, Misha, I just can't get up off the couch, then go find a video that shows you how to do some exercise from where you're at, but there's no excuse to not do it. <clears throat> so what I do, I just drank my tea and the ginger hit today. I drink a tea every morning that helps me in my fasted state. So I'm about 14 hours fasted this morning, um, meaning I haven't had any food for about 14 hours. I drink this tea in the morning. This tea is a specific tea from Argentina called Yerba Mate, but it's also very highly concentrated. And what it does, it's amazing. It has something called chlorogenic acids. It, it can cross the blood brain barrier and get nutrients to my brain. So now I have mental clarity. I have energy. I don't have the brain fog. I don't have the anxiety and the depression that I used to have, but it also is helping in a fasted state helping you produce ketones, the little messengers that tell you to burn fat for fuel. So metabolically, it's really great. But it also has um, antioxidant activity in it. It has anti-cancer activity in it. It has anti-inflammatory properties, and it has neuroprotective. Those little nerves in your brain, it has neuroprotective gene expression 
that goes on to help stop all that misfiring in the brain. My blood pressure went from 180 over, over 150 um, down to 110 over 70 now. And that's all I really changed. So this tea I drink every morning. I have it hot, but I also have it cold later. So when I'm done with this and I'm making my calls, I'll be having an iced one. I like it hot in the morning um, and it works better for your metabolism when it's hot. For fiber, then what I do, tea in the morning gives me all of that. Um, blessed Barbie, there are a lot of questions coming in on both platforms and I'm trying to answer them all. So if you've asked a question and you haven't gotten an answer, just re-ask it and I'll get to it. But I need to answer, I can't give a 30 second answer to some of these things. So I'm doing the best I can and I invite you to just ask, ask it again. So what I do for fiber, because most of us are supposed to be getting in 30 to 40 grams of fiber and we're just not. Um, scientific research is showing that most of us are getting in about 10 to 15 grams of fiber. So our guts are unhealthy. We're having IBS symptoms. We're having Crohn's symptoms. We're having all of these other things. Plus the downline autoimmune disorders that come with an inflamed gut. So I aim to get in 30 to 40 grams of fiber every day. When we look at the food we have, because it's been how, oh, I'm not a vegan blessed, so I can't answer that. I, but I will tell you this, the six simple steps ebook. So go to my, my profile um, and then click on the link. There's a, a whole landing page. I'll show you that. There's a six simple steps ebook that's free for everybody. When you get that, you'll also get a list of proteins. There's some for carnivores. There's some for people who are kind of in the middle and there's some for vegans. I am not, I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not an expert on vegetarianism or veganism because that's not my lifestyle. Um, it would like me asking a, a vegan, you know, what, what are the best protein sources for carnivore carnivores? I just can't answer it. So I'm sure there's other sources out there that you can get that part of your question in. Um, yeah, you don't like me. And I get that. So let's talk about that because even with, oh, I want to talk about this real quick and then I'll go into that. So this is the fiber that I use to start my meals. It gives me five grams of fiber, but more important than the grams of fiber that's in it, it's giving me seven different soluble and unsoluble fibers. It was spent 20 years in developing this and the guy who wrote this book helped develop both of those products for metabolism, right? So this helps your blood sugars be more, I call it time released. So when I do eat a meal now, I won't eat again because I'm doing, I'm going back to a 36 and 12 fast. So I'm fasting every other day to kind of fast like our, our ancestors used to be, like fast like we are built to. Um, and I just do better because I have ADHD, so I have impulse control. It's better to just take it away. All right. When I do eat, I'm going to have – that was a side topic. Um, when I do eat, I'll have this 10 minutes before. I just mix it up in some water. You'll get a little bottle like this. I mix it up in some water, shake it up, drink it down, wait 10 minutes while I'm cooking, then I eat. What happens is these fibers are scientifically designed to expand – and create a matrix in your gut that helps you feel fuller before you even eat. It helps slow down the delivery of fats and sugars into your system. The system has a 90 day money back guarantee. And one of the guarantees is it will help reduce your A1C, your blood glucose and your lipids within those 90 days. If you use it consistently and follow the steps I'm telling you. So, it does all of that. It took my A1C from 7.4 to 5.3. Do I still eat normal foods? Yeah, I have hamburgers once in a while. Yeah, I have pizza once in a while. Do I do I not have those things all the time? Of course I don't. Um, like I said yesterday, I had that Hasselback chicken. Simple, simple recipe um, with spinach, artichokes, and some cream cheese in the chicken. Um, I won't eat today, so I don't know what my daughter-in-law is cooking tomorrow. She has more more carbohydrates than I have. The name of the book is Why We Get Sick on that same profile link, and I'll get it over on Facebook and YouTube. There is a, a link to find the book, or you can just go Google it. This I don't sell the book. It's just I have some of the books that I read and get a lot of information from. This is where I started. When I got better from insulin resistance, 
Uh, I heard a lot about this book and I've actually had the pleasure of meeting this man and sitting in some teaching with this man and being able to answer, have him answer some questions for me. Um, and brilliant, kind, generous man and uh, so, so smart. It's just so brilliant. Um, but the book is Why We Get Sick. Also, just a little plug for him because he's such an amazing man. He has a book coming out on July 9th, How Not to Get Sick, and it will have recipes in it. In this book, he also has some of those protein sources and food sources listed in here. So um, that's all in the back of his book. Um, the orange powder package. You guys can just get it. So it's called the Feel Great System. But I want to tell you this. If you go to Amazon, eBay, Walmart, you're not getting the guarantees. The company doesn't cover that. There are no authorized distributors. We keep trying to get them off. And Amazon really shouldn't be letting them on, but they do. Um, when you use my link, you're, I'm an authorized distributor. So that means you're getting connected directly to the company. You get those guarantees, the 90 day money back guarantee, a quality guarantee and a low price guarantee. There's not one person that I've spoken to who bought it on Amazon, who paid less than they would have paid if they got it from my link. Then when I see that come through, you start getting texts and emails from me. I spent my evening last night texting back people who have been on the system for three months, who've been on the system one week, whatever, you guys get to text me, call me, we get on the phone, actually get on the phone and talk about it if you need the support. So a tea in the morning, a pre-meal drink before anything I eat. So you get 30 of these, 60 of these, 90 packets in total in that, that kit called the Feel Great System. That's all I did to reverse my insulin resistance. Let's go back a little bit because I was so sick. I had all of that um, except for psoriasis and eczema. Um, my doctors were cycling me through medications. Yes, insulin resistance cause, either causes or exacerbates all of these issues. When you listen to someone like Dr. Fung, Dr. Pradeep, Dr. Bickman, they will tell you that almost every disease and disorder that we suffer from today that's lifestyle related, and almost all of them are, they're all linked back to a metabolic disorder, which is linked back to insulin resistance or uh, insulin dysregulation in the body. So, and where does the insulin dysregulation come from? The food we eat for the most of us. Now I had head trauma that can cause insulin resistance in the brain. I've had multiple surgeries because I've had multiple injuries. Every time you have inflammation, and, and surgeries, it can cause that inflammation that starts to exacerbate insulin resistance. So it's not always the start of it is sugar, but sugar is what's keeping you insulin resistant. So how I take them every day. So this is food, this is sustenance, just like the food I eat. So even now in a fasted state, I'm drinking my tea. Um, it depends on the day. Sometimes I'll do the fiber during my fasting state just because there's prebiotics in here that are helping build my probiotics, helping my gut reset, helping my gut build healthier um, microbiome. So I use both of them. Now I've taken this during a long fast because I've done, I haven't done past 10 days, but I've done five, seven and 10 day fasts just to see what's going on and to help my body, help my liver clean up. But I've taken this during the fast and my ketones actually went up. Why is that important? When we're measuring blood glucose, what people are not understanding is that you're, you have glucose available in your system even without eating. Because when you're converting stuff back out of the liver, when you're converting back out of your fat, that's turning into a simple sugar called glucose that gives your body energy. Now your glucose level goes up. You haven't even eaten. When I hadn't eaten for five or 10 days, I could watch my glucose levels rise and fall in this nice little pattern. My ketones, when they come out, that's telling me I'm in a fat burning state. What does that mean? Insulin is present to when you have blood sugars present. And this gets a little gray for me too. So I'm going to have to do some research on it. But when you're eating food and you're getting those insulin, that, that sugar level up, your insulin level goes up. When insulin is out, you cannot produce uh, large amounts of ketones, maybe very, very tiny amounts but your insulin is preventing you from burning fat, from breaking down fat because insulin is like hoarder. It wants things to grow and it doesn't want to let go of anything. So as long as you're eating constantly, the insulin is up and it's hoarding. Now, when the insulin goes down and the component hormone called glucagon, which likes to eat things up, comes out, 
Now, hey, cat, you can have ketones being produced. Ketones won't be produced in large amounts when your insulin levels are high. Insulin stops that. So why do I check ketones more than I check blood glucose, especially in a fasted state? Because I want to see if my ketone levels have come up and they're up in a fasted state. The moment they start to drop drastically means I've done something to spike my insulin. Now your ketone levels are going to rise and fall a little bit too, because remember, glucose is being pulled out of your liver, out of your fat. And so that's going to change a little bit. But if you have a drastic change in ketones, you've spiked your insulin. Yep, high insulin means you have high sugar in the bloodstream. Some people have noticed when they start the system, their blood sugars go up. That can happen in about 30% of people. It's a phenomenon that I can't quite explain, except for that you have so much glucose stored or glycogen even in the liver. Glycogen is glucose molecules that are bonded together in these little packets that the liver breaks down and, and redistributes. But as that starts to happen, your glucose levels can rise. And if you're really sugar dependent, your body's like, oh, no, I need sugar. I need glucose. I need a lot of glucose because you've been feeding me a lot of glucose for a long time and I don't know what to do without it. So it can take a while for your body to regulate so that your glucose levels can normalize and you're not getting these high insulin spikes. I, I hope all that makes sense. Sometimes I, I, I think in my head and it doesn't always come out the way I want it to. Um, so how often? I drink this every morning. I actually now drink two a day because it's giving me nutrients, the tea. It's giving me nutrients. It's giving me all of those positive properties, energy, mental clarity, but it's also delivering a whole lot of essential nutrients. There is a tab in my YouTube called um, the tea, and I'm starting to put videos in there about how the tea works, why it works. There's 13 benefits of the tea, and those videos are all going in there. There's a couple in there now. Go look at those. There's, uh, I lost his name now. Neuro, neuroscientist, big guy. Anyway, there's a video in there from him on the properties of chlorogenic acids. By the way, the tea, why I choose this instead of just a bagged herbal mate tea, let's talk about that. The chlorogenic acids, the stuff that gets across the blood brain barrier, there's 375 more times more of that in this packet than in any standard bagged herbal mate tea, yerba mate tea. Sorry, somebody said herbal mate is a doctor and now I'm stuck saying your herbal mate, but it's yerba mate. So 375 times of that one component in this tea than a normal bagged tea. Plus it's been purified to remove pesticides and toxins. So it's highly concentrated extract that's highly purified giving me a power punch of all the nutrients that have been stripped out, not all of them, a number of the nutrients that have been stripped out so that I can have better brain health, better energy without causing heart problems. I was worried about it at first because I had so much energy. I'm like, oh my gosh, my blood pressure is already out of control. I wouldn't drink coffee. I wouldn't drink energy drinks. I wouldn't drink any of that, even though I was fatigued all the time. And then I start drinking this and I was panicked. My blood sugar is normal. My heart pressure is normal all of that. And all I did was this tea once in the morning and this 10 minutes before I eat the two biggest meals of my day. So a tea in the morning, a fiber packet twice a day before you eat. And that's it. That's how you take it in water. And the other great thing is um, I stopped traveling this last year because I just got tired guys. I love traveling, but I got tired. So I will be traveling again this year. When I'm traveling, it's really nice because I just put these in my carry-on. I put them in whatever purse I'm carrying. Easy, easy, easy. It doesn't matter where I'm at. In the airport, I can grab water in this. In a gas station, I can grab a bottled water. I pour it in, shake it up, and I can take it. I don't have to worry about steeping anything. I don't have to worry about any of that. Again, seven different fibers in here. Vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients that are all good for heart health. And thank you for all the loves. Whoever's sending me those, I really, really appreciate it. That's all I did, you guys, to help with my insulin resistance. You can get it in my profile link. And that's what changed my life and helped with it. What is his name? Dr. Bickman, B-I-K-M-A-N. Do you think eating your blood type will help with insulin resistance? Pebbles, I absolutely believe in eating for your blood type. Um, I have a book by Dr. Yao. 
I know there's a book, um, eating for your blood type. There's a book eating for your body type. There was, and I've read all of those books, but Dr. Yao has this book that came out. That's why calories don't count. This one is the one I was looking for. I have books all over my house, um, gene eating. And so he goes over that. Like I'm the, my history, the predominantly from my dad's side is native American from the great lakes of, of the U S so um, lots of cranberries, not a lot of other stuff going on, um, but meats. So it explains why I tend to crave that high protein more um, and why I love cranberries. It's in my genes. Now, if you're Mediterranean, you may need more fish. Your genes are going to regulate or dictate what kind of foods you need. So some people may lean more towards vegan. Some people may learn, lean more towards just pure carnivore. Um, yeah, I think that eating for your blood type definitely helps with getting your system in its entirety under control. The, this is called balance. And again, you're going to get it in my profile link. Do not go to Amazon, eBay, Walmart. You will pay more. You won't get the guarantees. And we found pirated and expired products there. Just save yourself the time and money, please. And if you don't, Please don't yell at me later because I've warned you. So let's come back. The gut. So insulin resistance causes some inflammation and gut microbiome issues. Absolutely. And the system that I use helps rebuild that gut microbiome. Um, does the tea make you jittery? No. There is no free sample of this. Um, the ebook is only through email. Yeah, Pebbles. Um, so I'm not sure what region you're from, but predominantly most of us Native Americans are going to lean more. Yeah, and I'm O positive also. So we're going to lean more towards a carniv carnivoristic diet. Although I do find um, for me some benefit in some of the vegetables and stuff. I'm not, I don't eat a huge variety of them. I just don't feel like I thrive on them. I tried to go vegan for a while, um, did it for a little over a year and felt like my health was getting worse. So I went back to eating meat. Um, I did it for spiritual reasons, but um, my understanding has expanded a little. All right. Um, the tea does not make you jittery. Uh, this is not eating for your blood type. It's gene eating, but it goes over similar information. Giles, Yao. These books are also in my recommended reading, um, my recommendations page. If you just go to my profile, I'll drop the link over here. If you go to the profile, there's my recommendations. So you'll see like I have no gallbladder. So the bile and the digestive enzymes that I take and all of these books that I reference a lot are in that my recommendations page. Okay, so, so fast is for how long? Let's talk about that. The fast, uh, all the orange packet, how is that before meals? If so, how long? So I drink this 10 minutes before. You'll get a bottle like this, and you don't get that on Amazon, eBay, Walmart, by the way. You get a bottle like this. Now, on the back, it says balance here and unamate here. I put more water in for my unamate. I usually drink my unamate when it's cold in about 20 ounces and less than that if it's hot. Okay. Now, the balance, it has about this much. And a lot of people have troubles drinking this much water before they eat. I'm one. So I mix up my water between these two lines on the front. So about that much water is what I put in mine. So then I just pour this into the water, shake it up, drink it down. 10 minutes before is the golden rule. 10 minutes before allows your digestive enzymes to start reacting with those fibers and expanding them so that they make that gelatin mass that starts to fill you up and allow you to feel satiated before you eat. So you're less likely to overeat. It allows that matrix that's built, and I'll talk about that in a second, that helps encapsulate those sugars and fats, slowing down the delivery of them into your system. 
this, not that other canister stuff that you'd have to like, you got, you guys, do you, do you want to really carry a canister around and try and scoop out enough to pour in and get one type of fiber? This has seven different soluble and insoluble fibers. I'm going to explain that in a second. And again, it's a packet. I tear open, pour in the water, done. Five grams of, of very specific fiber that help with all of that. Um, and the, the flavor on it's really light and you're chugging it down anyway. Uh, the, the fasting is an important step to know. So let's talk about fasting and why we're fasting, okay? Um, 16 hours fasting, eight hour eating window is the norm for the system. There are people, and it depends, I want you to understand that this is a, a midline suggestion. Some people who are very active may only fast for 12 hours. Um, some people may be doing OMAD. Some people like me, because I've had insulin resistance for a long time, have a lot of health issues to still overcome. I play with a little bit longer fasting. The norm is 16, eight, and here's why. Um, about two hours after you're, you're, you've eaten, your blood sugar starts to kind of normalize out. About four hours after you've eaten, they start to back, drop back down, okay? Somewhere in that timeline. Around eight hours after your last bite of food, your insulin levels, especially when you're insulin resistant and your insulin levels are high, about eight hours after you've eaten your last bite, your insulin levels will start to come down. When that happens and those insulin levels drop, so they're not that high level of insulin anymore, it takes about two hours. Remember I talked about glucagon, the component hormone, insulin, hoarder, glucagon, spender. Insulin has to go down for glucagon to come out. At eight hours, your insulin is finally down. About two hours later, when glucagon feels it's safe, your glucagon will poke its head out and be like, oh, hey, I can start to do my job. And it starts to send signals out to these other processes in your body. Fat burning, gut rest restoration, HGH, human growth hormone. Ketones all start to get cued. But it takes a couple of hours for that, that message to get out there. Maybe, maybe the cells aren't reading that email right now. Maybe whatever. It takes a couple of hours. So now we're at 12 hours. Insulin is down at eight hours. Glucagon is up at 10 hours. Glucagon is signaling. Now at 12 hours, HGH, uh, ketones, um, gut restoration is starting to happen at 12 hours. Most of us, if we make it to 12 hours in a day, are waking up and having a bagel, oatmeal, um, cereal for breakfast, high spike of insulin. Insulin goes right back up and your body goes, oh, that's the norm. We're going to live with high insulin. We're going to rely on sugar for our energy. Done. With fasting, at 12 hours, when those key components start to come out, ketones, HGH, all of that, starting to cue the body into processes, the gut starts to reset, your gut microbiome starts to clean up. Some of those negative bacteria are being starved of the sugar that they love so much. And um, the good bacteria can start to be rebuilt more naturally in your system. At about 14 hours, when all of those processes have begun, you really start to get into a fat burning state. So if you're looking at fat burning and turning over some of that, that junk that your body's carrying around, 14 hours is when that starts to occur. That's why we do 16 hours because now you have a good two hour window to do all of that in. If you wanna go longer once in a while, that's great. I encourage that, I do that. That's why I'm doing a 36 hour fast today. Um, I won't eat until tomorrow when I go to my family's house for dinner. And then I'll have a good day of eating. And then I'll probably do another fast because I, I have some things I want to address. So 16 hours of fasting for all of those processes to happen. And then an eight hour eating window. So when you get to 16 hours, you're going to, you're going to have this 10 minutes before then you eat and hopefully you're eating something that's high in protein and high in fats and low in carbohydrates. And now your insulin level stays down. You got it down. Let's keep it low and slow. And then you wait four hours minimum, up to eight hours, have your second meal. Do this again. Now you're keeping those insulin spikes down. Proven to, to reduce an insulin spike by 13% with white bread. Um, a glucose spike by 20% with white bread. One of the highest glycemic index foods out there. This reduced that by those numbers. 
So does it work? Yes, it does. Does it give you free reign to have bagels and croissants and donuts and ice cream and cake and, and rice and bread all the time? No, it doesn't. Let's be real. I hope that, does that help explain the fasting part? For how many days can you do fasting? So that's interesting. So if you're going to do a longer fast, I would definitely encourage you to contact your physician, depending on your, your, um, your health, right? There was a guy who did over 300 days of fasting to reduce, reduce his weight, his diabetes, and a number of other health issues. Is it something that I would recommend for everyone? Not in my life. Um, I normally do, I've played with a number of different types of fasting. Like I said, I've gone 10 days. Um, there's a lot of science that the best benefits that you're getting out of fasting are occurring at about hour 36. Um, you can push that to 48 hours if you want, but I would not do the 48 hour fast more than once a week. When I do the 36 and 12 hour fast, I actually have expanded my eating window to a 12 hour window. And so maybe I'll have three meals on that day because I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting in the nutrients that I missed on the day that I'm eating. Um, and that's why it's called a fast and feast method. Um, I, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do. Dr. Fung works with people and has them fast for much longer than 10 days, but that's under medical care. And he's closely watching their blood sugar levels and a number of other things. Um, 16 and eight is perfect to stop, start. Okay. 16 and eight Pamela. Um, I have several channels. So Facebook and YouTube, if you just type in, um, brilliant health with Misha on YouTube, this will be on replay there when I'm done. And all of the lives I've done talking about skin and heart and all of that are and PCOS. All of that is over there and you'll be able to catch everything that we talked about before you got here. Um, and if you have questions, Pamela, please just ask me more than happy to answer what I can in the time I have less. Um, so when I do the 36 and 12 fa fast, by the way, um, I'm going to be real. I'm human and I have emotions and I have ADHD and I have impulse control and, and life's got a little out of control for me. I'm not perfect. I'm in no way perfect. I have a real life just like everyone else. I have real struggles and real emotions like everyone else. So right now I want to get reset. So I'm going to aim to do a 36 and 12 fast at least three times a week. Um, and then I've done a 36 and 12 fast for an entire month and felt great afterward. I feel so much more mental clarity and um, energy after an extended fast. So that's for me. When you start, do a 16-8 fast. Good thing is you get to contact me and talk to me about, like, uh, I can't make any medical recommendations, but if you want to bounce things off of me and talk about what can work for you, um, I'm here for that. Um, it's brilliant health. I, TikTok's not letting me change it right now, so I've got to work on that. Brilliant health with Misha. You can just type in Misha Fayant and it will get you to my channel on YouTube. Okay, you have PCOS. So let's talk about that. How do you feel? Do, oh, the water fast blessed Barbie is not something I've done, although I can see the benefit in it. Um, because with the water fast, although you're not getting nutrients in, the one thing with water fast is I would make sure that you're still getting in electrolytes. Okay. That's a huge danger for most people who do water fast, get in the electrolytes, but it does give your body a lot of chance to, um, get into uh, a state of autophagy where you're really doing some cellular cleanup. So if you can do the water fast and you want to do that for a couple of days, I, I like, I applaud everyone who does. I have done fasts, but I always drink my tea because it helps shut down my hunger. By the way, the tea, um, why can't I remember his name? I can see him clearly. Uh, anyway, you'll find it in the, in the tab about the tea but this shuts down your hunger in two different ways. So even during those fasts, it's not spiking my insulin. It is helping with other productions. It's getting me nutrients in, um, but it shuts down my hunger. So that's simple. PCOS, I talked about a couple of days ago. It has everything to do, and we'll talk about it really briefly. Insulin is messing with your estrogen production 
and the cues you're getting for luteinizing hormones and follicle stimulating hormones that all regulate your periods. It's preventing the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So you're going to start to have facial hair problems. You're going to start to have hair falling out on your, your head. You're going to start to have weight problems, anxiety and depression problems. All of those are linked to high insulin. And when you get the insulin under control, the PCOS gets better. Um, I have some younger ladies that have had uh, struggles with PCOS and now I've been able to conceive children or are having normal periods and have lost the weight and have better mood regulation. It is linked into insulin resistance. If you go back to that YouTube channel, you'll see the talk where I went in depth about PCOS um, a few days ago or last week. Uh, okay. Hey, Labots. T Gandhi. I don't, I, I'm not, I don't know anything about that. So you guys look at, let's talk about, let's talk about this before I sign off today. Cause it's almost time for me to go start making phone calls. Um, I am just a real person like all of you. I got really sick. Yes. I worked in medical for years and yes, I worked with hormone docs and all of that. But at the end, those doctors were not able to help me. I had so many of these issues up here and I was on, I was on 13 different medications, 10 for the health issues, three for pain issues. And I was getting sicker. And my, my doctor, who's still a dear friend, um, was pulling her hair out. She was terrified for me. Like I was terrified for me. She had watched me go from world champion power lifter to having a cane and a walker because I was in so much pain and my, my health was deteriorating and my blood pressure was so high that both of us thought I could die in my sleep because my, my heart would just basically explode. All of that was reality for me two and a half years ago. All I did, all I did after she tried medication after medication, um, I never did Ozempic or the GLP ones, by the way, never will. Um, all I did was stumble on this system that you guys find it in my profile link, a tea in the morning, a pre-meal drink, just putting back what's been stripped out of our food so that my body can react to my food more normally and start to level out my insulin combined with some intermittent fasting. Now I have better health than I had at 45. I wish I would have known about this when I was competing. I probably would still be competing. Um, I just feel better. By the way, two and a half years ago, I couldn't kneel on the floor. My joints were so bad. I can kneel on the floor. I get up and down. I play with my grandson now. Things I couldn't have done two and a half years ago. Yeah, and here's the thing, Pamela. Pamela says her story is just like mine, just got sicker, but military doctors, not so much help. I, my son is military and my daughter-in-law is military, and I hear this a lot. But even if you're not a military person, remember, I worked in a hormone clinic. Insulin is a hormone. We tested all my hormones, never caught it. That doctor who was a specialist in hormones and weight called me into her office one day after we ran all of these panels, blood panels and 24-hour urine and saliva and said, Misha, you have the worst metabolic type that I could have imagined coming in and there's nothing I can do for you. I, I wish I could help you, but there's nothing I can do. That came from my doctor, from my doctor. Do you know how devastated I was when I'm working for her and at lunchtime I'm running out to my car, kicking my seat back and falling asleep because my cortisol levels were so out of whack because all of this was happening. Um, I was fatigued. I was tired. I would fight to get through the day and then I would just crash. And she's telling me there's nothing she can do to help. Um, this helped. This is developed by scientists and doctors, not your general doctors. But yes, it's science company. It's not a marketing company who's going to say, oh, the biggest thing right now is berberine. We're going to create a berberine supplement. We're going to tell everybody to take that. Or we're going to create, uh, what was it, a few years ago, turmeric. We're going to tell people to take that. No, there's science. And they've shifted in the last two years to, to dealing with healthcare, to now just focusing on insulin resistance and metabolic issues. Um, you can get the system in my profile link. Just tap on my picture up above. When the box comes up below, tap on that. It's the top link. I'll show you guys that here real quick. 
Let's just take a look here. You guys, I, look, I get it. I'm not trying to gatekeep, but I'm trying to protect you. So I have had a number of people who wanted the system, who bought the system, who said, Misha, you didn't call me. They ordered on, on Amazon, eBay. I have no idea. You don't get any of the guarantees and you're paying way more. So if you want me to help coach you, if you want me to help you through all this, you got to use my link. On TikTok, this is what it looks like. You're going to click on this link. When you do that, it's going to take you here um, to this page. And this page, the system I use right here, which is called the Feel Great System, you're going to just click on that and it's going to take you to the order page for that. But when we go back to that, and it'll, you'll know that you got it right because it'll have my name at the top, Michelle Fayon. Now, the ebook that I talked about, right here, six simple steps. See that? That's free to you guys. There's a website. Those of you guys who just caught this, there are some um, success stories in there. There's my story in there. There's tons of information about the products there. Please go utilize those resources if you're on the fence and look it. Contact me on WhatsApp, on YouTube, Facebook. You guys have been seeing my numbers scroll across. Contact me on WhatsApp. Click that. Send me a message. I do answer. Okay. Um, so I hope that helps answer all of that. And you guys, we're going to be talking about heart health tomorrow. So I'm going to go over how insulin resistance impacts, impacts your vascular system and your heart health and how it is said to be 95% of what's causing hypertension. We're a military family, parents, four kids, love them, but it's above them. Yep. It doesn't come out. I don't, I don't understand that comment. I was probably talking about something. Um, you guys, if you're having problems accessing my link, you probably just need to refresh your browser because the link absolutely works. Now, I got to go hop off and help some people um, like I would be with you guys. I appreciate you. I love you. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about heart health and high blood pressure. This helped my blood pressure, did not cause it to be worse. Somebody asked about jitters. No, it doesn't. There are three things that are attached to the caffeine molecule or combined with the caffeine molecule in this specific tea called adaptogens that allow you not to have that jittery effect. In fact, the energy you're getting from this is because it's helping you burn fat for fuel, especially in a fasted state. And it's getting important components to your brain. So your brain now has health. Please answer yes. I don't know what the question was. Yes, can you restate your question and I'll try to answer it before I hop off. Because I didn't see another, I didn't see a question from you guys at all. So um, if you have a question, you need to state it before I hop off. Otherwise, I'll be back in the mor morning. Sciatica. Okay. So sciatica causes, is there are a lot of causes for sciatica. But there is a nerve problem with insulin resistance that can exacerbate that sciatica or even kick it off. I've broken my tailbone six different times. Guys, I've had about 20 broken bones across my body. I have over 130 inches of scarring from injuries and surgeries. That's part of my insulin resistance problem in the first place, but sciatica. I had such bad sciatica that it was um, unbearable, right? Hard to walk, hurts all the time. I have a sciatica flare up every once in a while, especially when I'm getting in too much sugar and I know it. But getting my body insulin sensitive so that nerve firings are happening more properly so that whole pathway is not on fire and misfiring has helped dramatically. Is it going to take sciatica away completely? If you've had your tailbone broken six times like mine, probably not. Um, if you have also sciatica, understand you need to move and stretch you need to get some balance back in your body. There's tons of videos on YouTube, not the specialist on that. But um, yeah, my sciatica pain and just overall fibromyalgia joint pain, I was taking either hydro, norco, or gabapentin every night, sometimes 
um, an NSAID cycling through those things just to get the pain levels down enough that I could try and sleep. I don't do that anymore. I don't have a bottle of pain medications by um, my, my dresser. I would just Google it. You guys, one of the biggest skills we can have today is learning to just how to ask simple questions of Google and then knowing what are good sources. So if you just type in Google um, how to relieve sciatica pain or um, exercises to relieve sciatica, you'll come up with a number of things and you'll find someone there who you resonate with and can tolerate because I can't tolerate some people. <laughs> Some creators, I just, it just, uh, whatever, but just use Google a lot for some of those things. I can help you with understanding the links to insulin resistance. Cause that's what I do. All the outlying stuff. It, I look, I'm 60 years old. My brain is so full of stuff. I just, um, I don't know how much more I can cram in there. So the very top one is what's for insulin resistance. What helps with the insulin resistance is the tea in the morning and some intermittent fasting, and I coach you through all of that. I also send you a video on how to do the product when you order it. So tea in the morning, this. It's the very top one. The order of the system I use, that link, the Feel Great system, that's where you're going to get the one that helps with insulin resistance. When you order through my link, you're getting the 90-day money-back guarantee. Guys, do this for 90 days. This is seriously, this is real food products. It's helping your body build. You didn't get sick in a week. Why do people think that they're going to get healthy in a week? I saw an amazing, amazing video where somebody quoted Usain Bolt. He was like, I trained for four years for a nine second race. Why do we think that one week is going to, going to cure everything that we built for me for 40 years? Yes, you can order from the Netherlands. So that link in my bio, by the way, works wherever you are in the world based on your current IP address. So if you're in the Netherlands, it's going to open up to, um, to the site that's closest to you. So you're not waiting for stuff to come from the U S you're not paying all that shipping. We have, um, shipping sites all over the world and yes, you can get it in the Netherlands. Um, and I would love to help you in, in the Netherlands. And we just, and I still have, I have WhatsApp. You can contact me on WhatsApp and we'll be talking back and forth to help us be able, better be able to communicate. Okay. And then we just have to work out the times, right? Cause you're at a different timeline and we come up with times at work and then we make sure to contact during those times. So it's not in the middle of your night or mine and, uh, we can get you help. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow morning, we're going to talk about heart health. I'm going to go over the five ways that insulin resistance is creating your high blood pressure, how mine got better by addressing those five ways and in insulin resistance. And then tomorrow, I'm going to be asking you guys what topics you want to hear on Thursday and Friday. Some of them we do cycle through. So if you missed PCOS, if you missed skin health, if you missed neurological health, it's okay. We're going to go back over them at another time. But Think about what you want to talk about on Thursday and Friday, and we'll we'll vote on that tomorrow. And tomorrow, though, is heart health. Love you all. You guys, from the bottom of my heart, it's not easy to get up and do these every day, but the interaction you guys bring, the questions you bring, the possibility that you guys are getting healthier, that means everything in the world. That's why I get up every day, Monday through Friday, and do this. Because trust me, there's days when I'm like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to do this today, but I know people are waiting for answers and um, I hope that I've helped you in some small way and I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending your time with me and I appreciate you. Have a good day, guys.